Good morning. I'm out of breath out in the backyard, back pasture, because I've been cutting some grass with the scythe. Um, here's my scythe that I probably haven't shared on this channel before because I've gotten the past couple years and learned how to use it. It's so much easier to use this lightweight European, European scythe. Um, than the American-made kind that just weighs a ton. The American-made ones are, are really thick steel, and um, they have to just be, the only way they can be sharpened is ground down with a with like a diamond tip um, file or, or a high-speed cutting or grinding wheel. This kind, on the other hand, is actually what they call peened. It's, it's peened, which means it's pounded flat and sharp, um, with like a ball peen hammer. Um, so peening is the uh, is the term uh, that's used to describe um, how you hammer it against an anvil and you just, I'm not gonna show you how it's done, but you basically are elongating the steel and it's soft steel instead of hardened um, like the American ones. So it's not like a knife, it's more like a razor blade. <laughs> and it is very, very, very sharp, very thin, very lightweight. And mine needs to be sharpened, um, but it's for the moment it's doing the job. So what I'm doing is, uh, so I'm not actually cutting hay for the sake of hay, so to speak. In other words, it's not being used um, as animal feed right now. I'm primarily cutting this hay to act as a, um, a mulch to preserve um, moisture in the ground for these little tiny trees that I've planted out here. So this one's not very big at all, just a little willow branch is what it started out with. Um, you can see where we are in relation to the back of the house. Um, in fact, I'll just show you. Our property only goes back to this fence. We've got seven acres and our property is about uh, I think it's 400 feet deep by um, uh, approximately 800 feet long. So it goes back to those, right before those trees. Um, sorry, I can't see anything. A house, shed, hay shed, milking barn is back there. Anyway, and then my neighbor's uh, alfalfa uh, field back there. Um, so I planted along this whole property line. You can kind of see there's a fence here. That's my boundary fence. And then right here is a fence that I made uh, to keep the cows out. Um, it's kind of a, a double fence, you know, protect if they break through one, they can't break through the other. Um, but uh, eventually it just became a weed patch because I, I, well, I took care of the grass um, using several methods. I tried just mowing it. That brought some weeds. And to take care of those weeds, I sprayed it <laughs> with, um, I don't know, some kind of weed killer. And, and that, of course, made, made a ton of other weeds come in. Come in. Anyway, so I've got, I've got to upkeep this area. But there is no more grass in this area, in this little, I don't know, waste area. But my eventual goal it was to plant trees, and is still to plant trees. Um, among these weeds that are here, I do have some some tree sticks, some starts that that I've planted um, that will look. It looks like they will survive. Um, probably most of them won't, but but I plant a whole bunch of trees every year using this method. You know. Um, just, I'll repeat it, um, for those that may not have seen the other videos, I, I just cut branches of the willows and um, particularly willows because we have high ground water here. Um, even in the summertime, our water table is only about eight feet down below the surface. So if we can establish trees to the point where they're gonna reach their roots down eight feet, then um, there's it's really zero maintenance trees from that point. Um, and as long as we can plant those sticks in the early, early spring, definitely before they start to 
um, uh, show their leaves, you know, when they're still butt in the bud form, their bud stage. And that seems to be just enough of a head start for them to pour forth new roots from these sticks and branches and kind of follow the, the receding water down to the, to the, the typical summer low point. And uh, we've never had much luck with actually watering them. Like if we take the hose out to them and water them, um, it seems like it kind of upsets that uh, very uh, delicate balance. But if we just leave them, then most of them will send these roots down just as fast as the water recedes in the spring and into the summer. And uh, you know, here's another teeny tiny one. <laughs> I've got lots of other bigger ones. It seems like the smaller ones actually do better. Maybe it's just because they don't have quite as much height to have to maintain. They just have a little bit. I've totally misplaced my scythe. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to retrace my steps. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I probably won't find it again um, <laughs> in the course of this video. But, uh, wanted to show you. You can see some trees. Oh, some of the bigger ones. You can barely see that one. Uh, yeah, right there. It's doing fine. Got some little pine trees out here. Evergreens in the corner. I'm, I'm trying to... Um, oh, there it is. I left it right where it was in the beginning. I'm, I'm trying to utilize this uh, permaculture principle, which is to let the well, okay, how do I explain it? Okay, I'll simplify it. <laughs> Sorry, you don't even know what I'm talking about yet. In the summertime, we want wind to be directed towards the house. So we're gonna make um, rows of trees that sort of direct the prevailing winds, which typically in the summer come from the north and from the west here. Um, and just ca capture and harness those um, those slight breezes and direct them straight towards the house. So basically make a, a line or a funnel shape of deciduous trees towards the house. Um, and of course those deciduous trees lose their leaves in the fall. And at that point we want to block the winds um, from coming to the house. So the idea is to put uh, evergreen trees as a barrier against the wind, the, the prevailing winds in the in the winter time. Um, this is one instance where it pays to be on a property for a little while and kind of get a feel for the uh, the cycles, the the motions of the seasons. You know, which way does the wind come at certain times of the year? When, when the the wind changes, in which it really does seasonally, um, the prevailing wind changes directions. And it's, it's nice to sort of know, and after a few years, you're like, you know, if I had a barrier right there in the autumn time, it would, it would keep the house warmer. And if I could just capture these winds in the summer, that would be nicer. Um, anyway, it's just it's sort of a long-term idea and long-term project, but, um, but we can't do anything without trees to begin with. So I've actually just, I've, with that permaculture overall, um, idea in mind, I've, I've placed the majority of my, my evergreens in one spot for, you know, for one reason, and then the majority of the deciduous ones in another spot or in another, another line for the, for the, for the other season. Um, so I've kind of got this grand plan. I'm no permaculture expert by any means, but I do have a feel for my own land. Um, and it doesn't have to be you know, if, if you don't happen to have seven acres or if you have more or way less or, or, or you know, even an apartment, you can, um, if you have a little back porch or something, um, you can still take advantage of, of the differences in summer and, and winter. You can hang up a curtain on one side, for example. That's, that's still permaculture. It's the same principle. It's just on a smaller scale. In fact, it's a lot easier to control and to understand on a smaller scale because there are a lot fewer uh, things to have to deal with. But um, 
anyway, I guess that's a long way of saying that I've got an overall plan. I've made some progress this spring by planting trees to sort of, um, you know, put that plan into motion. And now I'm doing maintenance <laughs> by getting exercise, scything the grass, and and uh, preventing these trees from dying as the as the weather gets hotter. And uh, yeah, all of it's really enjoyable, actually. I really like getting exercise in this way. I kind of waited a little bit too long. It's probably nine o'clock in the morning now, and I probably should have started, I actually woke up at 5.30 this morning, just before the sun rose, and that would have been a nice time to do this. It would have still been wet, so I'd have to wear my <clears throat> my waterproof boots. And so for that, for that reason, it's a little bit easier to just come out here this time of day, but it sure is a lot hotter. Anyway, I'll get back to work. Um, I don't know if there's a good way to show you. I don't have a tripod at the moment. Um, it would be fun to show you how I scythe, but I don't think at this moment there's a great way to show you. <laughs> so I will plan on, on doing that later after I've invested in some better um, equipment to be able to show you. But uh, in the meantime, I'll just get back to work and I'll show you the results at a later date. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy your day. I'll see you later. Bye.